with equity. That's just like when we started off talking about how Abraham over in Hebrews, uh, where he had his seed, the multiple, innumerable, like the stars uh, of, the, of the universe. Well, there are people that believe, well, what he's talking about, that if you can finally count all of the Jews that ever were born and died, then you'll know exactly how many stars that are in the universe. Good luck with that. Okay. Yeah, really. Uh, but, but that's not exactly what he's talking about. Okay. Uh, he's telling you like that. It's, it, it's like that. You see. And then we go to verse 99. The Lord reigneth. Let the Lord, or let the people tremble. He sitteth between the cherubims. Let the earth be moved. The Lord is great in Zion, and He is high above all the people. Let, it, let them praise Thy great and terrible name, for it is holy. Now you're going to see three times He's going to be saying, God's name is holy, God's name is holy. And that's to represent the Holy Father, the Holy Son, and the Holy Ghost. The King's strength also loveth judgment. Thou dost establish equity with executed judgment and righteousness in Jacob. Exalt you the Lord our God and worship at his footstool, for he is holy. Moses and Aaron among his priests, and Samuel among them that call upon his name. They call upon the Lord, and he answered them. He spake unto them in the cloudy pillar. They kept his testimony and the ordinance that he gave them. Thou answered them, O Lord, our God, that was the God that forgavest them, though he took his vengeance of their inventions. Exalt the Lord, our God, and worship at his holy hill, for the Lord, our God, is holy. Now, here again, we going back to the whole theme of this, that God is omnipotent. A God created everything and everyone. Okay, God owes us nothing. We owe Him everything. Amen. And God is a righteous God, and God is a holy. He's He's the only one. God is the only one. The only one that you can absolutely trust. You see, because He's the only one that has the power. And he has a history, folks, a perfect history of always, of always honoring every commitment that his people have made to him. You see, you see God's not like, you know, today. So many people will try to put you between a rock and a hard spot. How many times have you had someone say, well, if you're going to be friends with them, you can't be friends with me. you got to choose. You can, you can do one or the other. No. If they're coming with us, I'm not coming. You want me to come? They can't come with us. Okay? People are like that. And that's childish, right? Mm -hmm. You see, none of that stuff will work with God. Right? God's not a respecter of persons. Not at all, is He? Amen. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before His presence with singing. Know you that the Lord, He is God, it is He that hath made us, and not we ourselves. We are His people, and the sheep of His pasture. Enter into His gates with thanksgiving, and to His courts with praise. He thanketh unto Him, and bless His name. For the Lord is good, His mercy <coughs> is everlasting, and His truth endureth to all generations. Let me, let me read that again. For the Lord is good, His mercy is everlasting. Folks, eternity is really a long time. Okay. And His truth endureth to all generations. Now, God is the only one that that can be said about. Amen? Amen. Well, when I was a young man, I kind of had this little notion that uh, for men to sing praises to the Lord, and especially, you know, uh, when you
you come to church and, and you had these folks up there singing, these men who couldn't carry a tune, that was especially silly too. And uh, back in those days, I had seen way, way too many neo-evangelical preachers. You had him out there one minute, they'd be on television, uh, they'd be crying. You know, Jimmy Swagger used to cry all the time. He'd get preaching. Now, I wouldn't really put him in that category because he had some grit. At least he stood for things, okay? Uh, he came out, he preached hard against the sin of abortion, and evil would come out. But, but there were others, these prosperity preachers, that would just, well, they'd be crying one moment. I remember uh, Oral Roberts, if he didn't get any more shoes or something, uh, uh, so much money that the Lord was going to take him home. You know, people didn't give him. And so many of these others, and uh, you would see him, and, and they'd be as phony as the day is long. They'd be out there crying uh, up a storm, and then the next moment they'd be out there uh, singing up a storm. And I equated that uh, with, well, it was at that time, if you remember, going back, especially in the late 50s, early 60s, Grandma, I'm sure you remember, uh, where feminism had crept into all the seminaries and all the Bible schools and all of, you know, this teaching that the pastors had to be more loving and more gentle and that they had to get in touch with their feminine part, the, their feminine self. Well, when I was a young preacher, I couldn't find any feminine part of me. I mean, uh, you know, I looked all around, it wasn't there. But anyhow, so I had this mindset because of that and, and seeing that these people that that was kind of a uh, a feminine thing to do. But then as I've gotten older, some of you may have noticed, I've gotten older. Uh, I look back in those days and I realize that uh, that it's, it's not that bold men of God, bold men of God will sing boldly and they'll sing loudly. And that Amen. Uh, that it's, it's the prissy preachers that really don't, you know, proclaim, and, and especially those that will never take the preaching to the streets. Mm, How many right. times? You know, the Bible doesn't tell us uh, to find yourself a comfortable pulpit somewhere, hold up in there. And I know, of, I know of some preachers that actually tell their people, you bring them into the church, and I'll give them the gospel message. But they will never go out to the streets, never go out there, as scripture tells us to go out to take the gospel on the world. In fact, they'll say that he looks silly. I remember having a preacher tell me that you will, as long as abortion is legal, you will never find me uh, out in front of an abortion mill as long as it's legal because that's disobedience, you know, uh, and that's to the government. So my response to him was, I don't think I'll ever find you doing anything that takes any courage or integrity. And, uh, he didn't have an answer for that. And that was the very same fellow that told me that my Bible doesn't tell me that I'm supposed to stand against the government. And I said, really? Have you ever heard of the prison epistles? And of course his answer, well, of course I have. And I said, why do you think they're called prison epistles? Well, because they were written from prison. Well, was Paul and Peter and the others in prison for obeying God or obeying the government? His response was, I never thought of it that way. I think I might have to change my position. You see, uh, I, I try to find the nicest way I can to say this, but you're an idiot, okay? I mean, how else, you know, people who are supposed to be pastors are supposed to be in a pulpit? I remember, again, I, I had a Presbyterian preacher. And he came out and he said, you know what, I admire what you do out there in the streets. I wish I could do that. He said, but, um, he said, I I'm afraid. He said, uh, if I were to preach the way you do, I would offend too many women in my church because uh, in our church, we have a large church, and you know that uh, that sin is very prevalent. Hmm. And I says, dummy. That's what I said. I said, dummy. Do you think maybe if you've been preaching against that sin the way you're supposed to, that sin would not be so prevalent in your church? And his response was, you know, I think you have a point. 
<laughs> See, the only nice thing sometimes being around these fellows is I feel brilliant when I'm around. <laughs> I mean, here it is. It's it's literally. Listen, any time a preacher preaches a message and somebody says you preached a good message, guess what? He did. It's spelled out. It's right here. It's literally spelled out. All you got to do is read it, folks. Amen. So when you stand in a pulpit here and, and you preach this message, all you're doing is taking it right from the Word of God. It's already been preached on. Amen. Well, now I realize today that uh, the bold men, men of God, boldly shout praises uh, to the Lord. And they do it whether the world likes it or not. Now, I find it to be absolutely mind-boggling, too, when I try to fathom the realm of God's awesome being. When one considers that the earth and all that it contains is but a, a mere speck of dust when compared to the universe. Think about that. This earth that we're on, with its vast oceans and all of its vast prairies, it's only a mere speck of dust if you compare it to the universe. And that universe that God created. And when one considers that our omnipotent God has no limits. Can you imagine that? Yes. God has no limits to his power and abilities other than what he might place upon himself. The Lord Jesus placed the limits upon himself to fulfill the prophecies. One might ask, what could possibly what could possibly be more extraordinary than God's awesome creation? Well, here it is. That God and all of his awesome being would even care about us feeble, sinful people, much less love us enough to suffer crucifixion in our place in order to satisfy his holy, righteous standards of perfection. Thus allowing those that would call upon his name to escape the eternal fires of hell. That is more extraordinary than all of the creation. Amen. So what could possibly be a greater miracle than all of creation itself? Well, how about becoming, now think about this. You want to talk about a miracle? How about becoming immortal? and living pain-free with a lack of nothing forever without ever, without ever having to see one little child suffer and die and being absolutely helpless to stop it all. You know, one of the things is, one of the, the toughest things about being a pro-lifer out there on the streets, as we know, is I think God, God gives us the saves because the losses sometimes if you if you dwell on it you know it can, it can kill you right every time you lose every time you see one of these women coming in knowing they're going to kill that child I think about that song Danny Ray sings Daddy Did I Have to Die and trying to stop it or sometimes when you come very close and you think you've talked them out of killing a baby and then they come back Guess what? I'm not going to miss that in glory. No. I'm not going to miss it at all. No. Now just imagine this. Seeing your parents and seeing your grandparents and great-grandparents that you've never met. And you're going to see them living in young, glorified bodies. The way you'll have. The way you'll have. Can you imagine that being with your great great grandparents and you're all appearing to be the same age? Wow. Wow. Can you imagine the questions you might have for them? You know, people find out, you know, they've been told this or told that about their genealogy and then they find out that it was not true all along. Just imagine, too, all that you might learn from them. Now, have you ever heard someone say that you have to give up too much to be a Christian? You just got to give up too much. Well, I thought about that. I give that some thought. And after giving it some deep, deep thought, the 
this is what I've concluded. In heaven, there will be no death or dying. Not going to miss that. Oh my goodness. There will be no pain or crying. Not going to miss that. No sickness or disease. There will be no murderers. There will be no thieves. No rapists or sodomites. There will be no lesbians or transgenders. There will be no communists or hypocrites. In other words, I can just sum it all up by saying there won't be any liberals there. There will be no Muslims or ISIS. No war or crisis. No IRS, no EPA, no Planned Parenthood, or a corrupted VA. No basis. Now here's the best part of all. We will all have all of eternity to sing praises to our awesome, awesome Lord who loved us enough to give us blessings beyond belief. And in heaven... Folks, and I got really good news for all of you. In heaven, all of you will sing on key. Everybody point at Dale, and Dale will sing on key. <laughs> ah, I struck a note. I did. I struck a nerve. Did you hear that? All right, that's all right. You don't have to embarrass yourself. I'll embarrass you. <laughs> you can count on that. <laughs> Always trying to help out. Uh, let's go to five seven in the white <clears throat> and practice. But when you get to heaven.
Ray Charles could even see Dear Lord mm -hmm. writing on the wall. And uh, so, Father God, we just thank you for all your goodness upon us and uh, the blessing that uh, the meal we're going to share together. And uh, just let your name, Father God, be glorified. So in all these things, we thank you in your son's precious and wonderful name. Amen. 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 Thank you, Travis. Well, Travis <clears throat> teaches a class at the Portland Church of Prophecy. Uh, he's been a real help to me out there. I appreciate it. I need all the help I can get. Uh, you folks that weren't here earlier, I, I read this letter I got from Teddy Hilson. Uh, some of you probably heard of the Hilson Nut Company, which he used to own that. But uh, Teddy wrote this letter for it. She said, thank you for the card. I really appreciate the prayer. Teddy's about 80 years old. Some of you remember Teddy. Mm -hmm. uh, short woman, uh, dark hair. Um, he said, I, I really uh, appreciate the prayer and the sincere concern. I'm trying to I don't get drive the camera. too much nowadays, but I still hope to get out to the, the new location one time. Uh, blessed, have a blessed Thanksgiving to you and Ellen and to all the good people there at Doors of the Word Church. I'm listening to you right now on the radio that she wrote that. So we miss having it. She really wanted to be here today, but uh, she has a rough time driving, especially oh, yeah. today might not have been a good day for her. Mm -hmm. And a couple of things. So I'm going to hook up a lot more responses right to the radio. Okay. I, mean, I don't know what I'm doing. A lot. No, our, our, our <laughs> Thursday programs have been very good in the sense we've really been putting out a lot of information. If you listen to that program and compare the amount of information we get out, they're excellent. Just about anybody else on there, on the radio. Uh, I have Dan over there on the computer. He's got his computers up there, and uh, if I could get him to have a more steady hand, because <laughs> he likes to move that stuff up and down and go like this. <laughs> 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 You gotta teach him speed reading. And then, and, and so with Dale and Dan and me, between the three of us, we really get a lot of stuff out in a short period of time. So I praise the good Lord for that. Mm -hmm. And we're getting a much better response, too, from the Michigan stations out there, uh, too. Now, one of the things I'll tell you, too, uh, you folks out in the Warren area, 1440 uh, is up for sale. In fact, Mike Arch, by the way, uh, Mike Arch, next Sunday, next Sunday evening, uh, I'm going to have to be in Michigan, so Mike Arch is going to be preaching in my place out there next Sunday, okay? Uh, so you folks, make sure you come out and, and uh, give him and support him out there as he's preaching. But he's uh, trying to buy, and the process of buying that, 1440. And for some of you, if you might want to invest in the station, uh, he wants me to be a part of that. And what we want to do is we want to do our Sunday night services live on the radio. Once he gets that, if we can use that, we're going to turn that back room into a studio. And we'll do a live, a live, uh, so you'll all be live on the radio nationwide <coughs> as we do that service. That would be great. Wouldn't it? So Our voices better be good. Oh, yeah, you have to practice. <laughs> I'll, I'll make sure you practice. The but... Um, so that's, that's working. If any of you uh, want to invest in that, then let me know. Or let Mike Arch know. Oh, good the station. We're working on that. Uh, let's see, any other announcements? For some of you that weren't here earlier, again, I'll be preaching in Michigan next Sunday. And um, next Tuesday and Wednesday, we'll be on death row. So if you can remember to pray for us while we're up on death row uh, to break. It's really not a good place to be on death row. And, uh, you can remember to keep us in prayer because we go down there. Usually what happens, we go down and cheer them up. They cheer us up, huh? But it's tough. They have a tough life, a really tough life there. So keep us in prayer if you would. Okay. Uh, and then uh, don't forget on the 5th, Saturday the 5th, we have our uh, All Lives Matter conference. Now we're going to, this is in response to this Black Lives Matter, but... More so, All Lives Matter, we're going to have uh, 
people speaking about abortion and euthanasia. We're going to have people speaking on, we're going to have police officer Sergeant J.T. Kurtz. Uh, Jan Porter, as you know, she's a national uh, figure there. She'll be one of our speakers. Uh, Matt Lynch, who is running for the 14th Congressional District. Matt is a real statesman. And uh, then uh, Deborah Sally, who's a, a fellow that just writes some really good articles. I mean, just some real, uh, it will be one of our speakers. And then J.T. Kurtz, Sergeant Kurtz will be speaking on how police officers feel about this. Uh, uh, Black Lives Matter, how, you know, today their concerns about uh, when they get, get a call, is, is that call, is it going to be that they're going to be ambushed? What are they going to have wait for when they get there? Yeah. Boy, I'm going to tell you, I got a tremendous good response from the police chiefs around here in, in this county because we just sent them on a letter. The letter was a simple letter saying, we want you to know that we here at the Joe County Tea Party have your back. And uh, yeah, we want you to know that we're supporting you. And uh, I actually had the sheriff come out and to, to speak. And he actually, the guy said, you don't know how much, you don't know how much that, I thought he was going to start crying. How much that meant to us, he said, because we don't hear this so much. We're always hearing about what we do wrong. Yeah. And uh, to, to know that you guys actually have our backs. And, uh, and same thing with the Russell police chief. He told me the very same thing down here. And the Solon police chief, by the way. So uh, anyhow, in fact, uh, Chief Kilbane from Independence uh, wanted to be our speaker, but he had already scheduled to an activity with his son, who's uh, in school. And then we're going to have, as, as you know, uh, the death row inmates. They're going to be talking about what it's like. Just imagine, again, like I said, uh, it would be like for you, for your family, to be on death row. Mike for 24 years and Anthony for 31. Uh, again, like I said before, it's a bad place. But not just what it affects you, how it affects your family. First of all, it's bad enough knowing that you're on there for a crime you didn't commit. Mm. But it's even worse knowing your family is suffering mm -hmm. for a crime that you didn't commit. And a lot of times, folks, uh, yeah. your family and relatives don't necessarily believe you because of the way that these these ju these court systems, yeah, the corruption in the judicial system, <laughs> some believe. Yeah. And then we're going to have to Rich Youngblood. Yeah. He heads up uh, Concerned Veterans for America. He's going to be talking about, again, like I said, uh, the, the VA, the corruption within the VA, and how we've lost oh, yeah. thousands of veterans have died waiting yeah. on treatment because Obama's sending all that money over to yeah. uh, his Muslims, his mm. fellow Muslims. Yeah. That's mm. right. By the way, over 90% of the Muslims that are coming into this country are on welfare or automatically get Social wow. Security. Yeah. And that money has come away from the Veterans Association. Yeah. So he's going to be talking about that. So you all want to be there to support these people. Now in all of this, it's actually a fundraiser for Joe County Right to Life. There's no charge. We're going to take up an offering. Uh, but uh, Peg, how many ladies do you have cooking right now for that? Me? Just you? What about the other Peg? Well, she's got people she's getting. Okay. So that little blonde-headed girl there, that's Peggy. If you want to, you ladies want to cook chili, this is your opportunity uh, to cook chili or some kind of desserts or whatever. Okay. So see Peg here and sign up and be a doer of the word. Now this is this is only for women this time because the women we don't want we don't let in our chili cook off. It's only for men, and we told you why because the women will win. The women <laughs> might win. <laughs> We will not tolerate that. <laughs> what do you mean? Do you so anyhow, <laughs> then also, uh, I wanted to say this too. We're already loading the bus for Washington for the March for Life for January 21st, 22nd, 23rd. I was thinking that going So here. if you want to be a part of that, go with us. Ooh, this is going to be a historic. Last bus. year we had the yeah. largest crowd ever, over a million people. If you want to be a part of that, that you were there for the March for Life, uh, let us know. Peg, do you have that list? Mm -hmm. Okay. Get with Peggy and, and, or me and make sure that you get your name on that list. Okay. Uh, we leave here at 9 a.m. on Thursday, January 21st. We return here at midnight on, on uh, Saturday, the 23rd. What's the charge for that? Okay. 
Uh, well, it depends on who you are. Okay. Well, what we would do to charge Grandma, usually the rooms are uh, about $80 and the bus fare is about $70. So it comes out to about $150. Now, for people that have children, like a, the one to bring a lot of children, or